Transparency. When we deliberately disobey God and suffer the consequences, we should be open and honest about our sins. Here now is Dr. Gene Getz. Well, it's morning here in Israel, and I'm standing by the beautiful Mediterranean Sea. And it's a gorgeous morning. Actually, the sun just came up just a little while ago. But this is a very unique spot to reflect on one of God's greatest servants in the Old Testament. His name was Jonah. And of course, Jonah had a tremendous call and challenge from God. And I'd just uh, like to read about it just a bit, uh, right here at the very beginning, uh, where we read, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. He was a prophet. God spoke directly to him. He's called son of Amitti. By the way, to give you a frame of reference, if you go north, northeast, about 50 miles, you'll come to Nazareth. And Jonah lived just a little bit north of Nazareth. And that's probably where he received his call uh, to do something very special. Something, by the way, he didn't want to do. So we read, uh, God said, get up, get up, go to the great city of Nineveh. Now, to help you understand where Nineveh is, if you go to the northeast, the same as towards Nazareth, but just keep on going from this point about 600 miles because that's the Assyrian territory. And uh, he was supposed to go to Nineveh. The Ninevites were very, very, very wicked people. And so God had a message that he wanted to give these uh, people uh, through Jonah. So consequently, uh, he said, I want you to preach against this great city because their wickedness has come before me. However, <laughs> Jonah did not want to do that. And he had reasons. One of the reasons was that these were very wicked people, the way they treated the Israelites. Uh, they were brutal and evil. And he didn't want to see them delivered. And he knew that God was a compassionate God and he just didn't want to go. So consequently, uh, Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. And he went down to Joppa. Now, from where I'm standing here by the Mediterranean Sea, if you go south, just about 20 miles, you're going to get to Joppa. And that was the seaport, the major seaport at that time, a very important seaport. And he boarded ship. And so he headed towards Tarshish. Now, if you look out over the Mediterranean Sea, you say, Tarshish, where's that? Well, we don't know for sure, but actually we believe that it's probably about 1,800 miles all the way to Spain. So rather than going 600 miles that way, he's gonna go 1,800 miles that way. Well, the fact of the matter is that uh, God was not pleased with that. So uh, he brought a huge, huge storm. And frankly, I think that storm was pretty close to the shore. Uh, now, when the, the sailors, they came to Jonah and said, who are you, what are you doing, what's happening? He actually confessed it and he said, I serve God. I serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were pagans. And uh, so they didn't know what to do with this situation, but he said, hey, just toss me overboard and everything will be okay. That shows how desperate he was not to obey God. And so, they actually prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in order uh, to be protected because they knew they had to do something they didn't want to do. They tossed him overboard, and as they did, the Bible said that God had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. But the fact of the matter is, when Jonah was confronted with the fact that he was disobedient, he was transparent. He told it like it was in spite of his disobedience. Well, it's an incredible experience to be in Israel. Been there several times with some of you. 
And what an experience to stand there by the Mediterranean Sea. And the other exciting thing about that is that all over Israel you can be in places that are settings for both Old Testament and for New Testament uh, situations. And of course, I was standing there in a relatively close uh, area to where Jonah actually boarded ship and headed out across the Mediterranean Sea. In the New Testament, that's basically where Peter was on the rooftop, you know, centuries later, where he had that vision that God had a passion for both Jew and Gentile, and sent him on down to Caesarea, which, as I pointed out, was about 20 miles uh, further north from where I was standing. So one of the interesting things that you learn when you go to Israel, there's layer after layer after layer of historical events that happen within this relatively small parcel of land. Now in this particular situation, of course, we're looking at Jonah, God's call his disobedience. And there's no evidence at this point that he's repentant. He was honest, but he wasn't repentant. He wanted to die rather than go to Nineveh. Now later on we're going to find out why. I think we have some real clues as we go on in this story. But I think the point that we need to be aware of is that honesty is not a guarantee that people are truly remorseful for what they've done wrong. God looks for honesty, yes, but He looks for repentance. He looks for remorsefulness in terms of what we have done wrong. Now let's, let's think for a moment in terms of application. And here's a question. Why is honesty in itself no guarantee that we have truly repented of our sins? Well, the fact is that can happen. It happened to Jonah. It can happen to us. James 4.17, I think, really speaks to that uh, duality, that possibility in our personalities. When he writes this, James wrote, So it is a sin for the person who knows to do what is good and doesn't do it. Jonah knew what was right. He knew what was the will of God. And he knew it was a sin to disobey God. But he chose to disobey God anyway, even though he honestly admitted that he was walking out of the will of God. I know that I have met in ministry people who've come to me. I'm thinking of a man right now who said to me, Jane, I'm leaving this marriage. I have no reason to leave this marriage except my own selfishness. Uh, I know it's out of the will of God, but I'm going to do it anyway. And he walked out of the will of God. Now obviously, and we'll talk about this in a future principle, there are consequences to walking out of the will of God, just as there were consequences in the life of Jonah. But there's one thing that I think we need to be aware of, and that is that uh, this principle is very, very important and it's true. And so let me just share this principle with you once again. When we deliberately disobey God and suffer the consequences, we should be open and honest about our sins, but there's a continuation on into another principle or two, and that is that our openness and honesty should lead to true repentance and sorrow of heart.